Welcome back to more music and conversation with the time. Coming up, we'll talk with Jelly Bean Johnson and the Mirror Man, Jerome Benton. But first, let's listen to Summertime Thing. In any R&B band worth this groove, you've got to have a great drummer. In the case of the time, that's Jelly Bean Johnson. According to Bean, the best part about being in the time is that they allow him the creative space he needs. The luxury about being in the time is everybody's a producer. And so, you know, we don't have that, that ego problem and stuff about, well, you know, like Jesse cut all his tracks and stuff and he used a drum machine. I mean, like, you know, there's a couple tunes that does have real drums where I actually played. And, you know, yeah, then I decided then. But, we, you know, we have a nice sounding kid at flight time. So that's cool. So that, in this band, I have the luxury of, of being in a band with producers where, you know, I don't have to worry about that. You know, I can just, you know, do the thing and know it's going to be right. You know, even bands today, they still, they got the drummer, you know, playing to a drum machine. Well, it's more, like you said, the drum machine has come more over the years and stuff and it's more prominent and stuff. But, uh... I still think as a drummer, if you're worth your oats, you've got to have a good pocket and stuff like that, and that's important. I think personally, any good band, any good R&B band, he, the key to it is the drummer. He has to have a good pocket because you're, even though you're the drummer, you, you, you're you responsible for setting that groove because these guys are dependent on you, whether they're dancing or Jesse's playing a guitar solo or Jimmy's playing. If that pocket's not right there, then it ain't happening. You know, I, I that's another thing I've learned from producing. You know, the pocket has to be, you know, right.
I'm not a singer per se. You know, I love drums, I love guitars. You know, so I've always been a, a guitar person and a drum person. People just didn't know about the guitar until I started doing records. Because, see, I don't dance or nothing like that. You know, that's my job. That's the one job I've had when I'm on stage with the time is to keep the, you know, keep the pocket. So drone can act crazy and Morris can go off on a tangent. But when they come back, that foundation is still there. What came first, the guitar or the drums? The drums came first. The drums, I, I still consider myself a, a drummer, even though, you know, I do know a little bit about the guitar now. The, the luxury about the time is all those guys can play. See, we came up, when we made records, you had to be able to play. And that's the difference. That's the, that's the beauty of being in the time. You know, speaking about that, see, a lot of people don't know that Morris, Morris is a world-class drummer. Morris is one of the baddest drummers running wild. People don't even know it. They just know him as Morris Day, you know, character, crazy, you know, Morris Day. But Morris can wear out drum set too. Me and him grew up together. Played, we're both left hand. Play the drums left hand. And I'm right handed. I'm just weird. <laughs> but uh, we both come from the left side and stuff. And uh, that's the luxury. That's what I admire and enjoy about this band. And that's what I missed over the years is that I was in a band with with five, six other guys that could really play that if I messed up, they were going to cover me anyway because they're that good. I was looking for some company, that's right. Aside from Morris Day, Jerome Benton is the most active member on a Time stage, and their interaction is the catalyst for the Time's often zany antics. But as Jerome says, he didn't start out that way. I wasn't on stage at all. I just was on stage for bringing Morris to the mirror. And what happened is, over the years, um, I guess the guys seen that I was a little creative and brought me out front to, to present the character that I have. And that's me. It was just a little gimmick that I, you know, we were sitting in rehearsal at this place called Yasms. And in the song Cool, Morris says, somebody bring me a mirror. And in this club, it was your typical old ghetto, red and black, crushed velvet club, dark red lights, and mirrors on the walls, you know, the type of mirrors that you get the plaster and the mirrors and you paint them gold yourself. There was a mirror hanging on the wall and Morris said, somebody bring me a mirror. So I said, I'm going to get him this time. So when he delivered that line, I went over to the wall and grabbed the mirror off the wall and, and ran up to Morris and showed him. And they said, hey, yeah, Jimmy Jam, Jelly Bean, all those guys, Terry. They said, uh, yeah, why don't we incorporate that? Fellas, y'all play something. 
classic. You know, I think I feel the need for a change. Crossover. I was basically a roadie. I was doing roadie work and ballet work for guys. And from the roadie, I went to handling all the baggage for everybody on that tour. That was Vanity, uh, Prince, and the time. That was handling 83 bags in each hotel down south with no elevators, but on second floors of these little roach motels and everything else. Um, from that, I helped choreograph a couple of songs and stuff and came up with a few little unique dances. And, you know, Jimmy comes in handy with that also. And everybody kind of puts in a lot of say with the little dances. Fellas, what's the groove? I still be carrying my mirror. I still, I still do valet work for Morris if that's what it comes down to. You mean off stage? Yeah, I'll do it. I'll be doggone. Man. Hey man, I'm never too big. My parents are never too big to, you know, step back. I got to sit down and do the do. So, but I'm a star now. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. <laughs> You've been listening to a full hour of music and conversation with The Time, featuring Morris Day, Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, Jesse Johnson, Monty Moyer, Jellybean Johnson, and Jerome Benton, and music from their Paisley Park reprise album, Pandemonium. This program is copyrighted 1990 by Paisley Park Reprise Records, and no portion may be copied or reproduced without written permission. The show was engineered and produced by Mark Grau, executive producer Larry Butler. That was so nice. I'm Steve Ivory. Thanks for listening.